So for today's video, we're going to be talking about river systems. In this video, we're going to go over some terms and some definitions of things you'll need to know for this unit, and then we'll talk about a diagram. So first, let's go over uh, some terms and definitions. So watershed. Watershed is a high level of ground that determines which direction a river flows in. So if you imagine a mountaintop, a mountaintop. So the water on this side will flow in this direction and the water on this side will, will flow in that direction. A river system does not go over a watershed. You can't, you're not going to have water flow up over a high elevation over to another side. So watershed determines which direction river flows in. Drainage basin. This is the area that is normally drained by a river. So it's usually very close to the watershed because the water is moving away from that area and that's called the drainage basin. Source. This is where a river begins, usually uh, by a spring, a natural spring, which is water coming from below the earth's crust and it kind of bubbles to the surface and then depending on the watershed or the headwaters, it flows in the direction it needs to go. Or a natural glacier, so if we think of the top of a mountain and as the mountain melts, as the seasons change and then that water starts to come down from that elevation and flows into the river systems. Next we have tributary, which is my favorite word, and uh, these are smaller rivers that flow into a larger river. And we'll look on our diagram, but these are these tiny little, if you ever see a map and you see a large river system and you have all these little kind of branches they look like, those are all tributaries. So smaller river that flows into a larger river. Channel. Uh, this is where, uh, this is the main path of the river. And this is where uh, depression takes place. So as the water flows along this path, you know, um, rocks and sediment and sand are picked up along the way and they're carried along by the, by the water and deposited uh, further down the river system, which causes the, the land to erode and for the water to, or the river to kind of depress into the earth's surface. This is why when you see a river, the land on either side is at a higher elevation or higher. It almost looks like the river has kind of been cut out of the ground. Floodplain. This is a low-lying area, usually a plain, so a flat, uh, flat, the earth's surface is flat in this area, that can usually gets flooded by the river. So in spring, the time we have right now, when the, uh, you know, the ice melts and, um, and we have lots of rain, you can have flooding in river systems, and the river goes above the uh, river's edge, and it uh, can flood certain areas, so that would be the floodplain. Meander. A meander is a loop or a bend in the channel, so the river takes, you know, the, very rarely do they go straight from one point to another. They kind of meander across the earth's surface, and that's what it's called, that meander, that loop or bend. The river bank is the sides of the river, so you have the river depresses into the earth's surface, and then you have the river banks on either side and the higher elevation. The riverbed is the bottom of the river, so below, if I was to eliminate all of the water, the bottom would be the riverbed. The delta uh, is, uh, it, it, it's where the river system meets a larger water system, so usually an ocean or a larger lake, and it, it because the water, um, it, it kind of erodes away, takes all the sediment and rock away, and so it turns it into a flat area. And because it's flat, it kind of spreads out into sort of a triangle shape. So the river almost gets wider at that point, um, which then leads to the mouth. The mouth is that point where the river ends and the ocean begins, or the larger body of water begins. So the river comes down and it washes over um, the, the earth at this point where it's meeting this larger body of water and, uh, and it's in this triangle shape so it goes from a delta to the mouth. So let's look at the diagram. So let's imagine this is our mountain top and this is our high elevation up here. So this is our watershed. So the water on this side is going to flow in this direction along our river system and the water on the other side is going to flow down that side of the mountain. We also have another watershed here. This is a higher elevation, so the water on this side would flow into this river system and the water on this side would flow into that river system. So we have drainage basins near our watershed along here. Our source, which is probably a, a glacier at the top or a natural spring where the river system begins. 
We have our tributaries, these smaller river branches that lead into the, the larger main path. Our channel, the main path that our river system occurs, where we have that depression, so it would be lower into the Earth's surface. Our river banks on either side. We have a lake here with a river system that, with a tributary that leads into our channel. Our floodplain in this area here, so when this, in the springtime, this area, the, the water levels might rise, and then this area would become flooded because the water would go over the river banks and it would flood this land area. And then eventually it would recede and it would go back into the proper channel. We have a couple meanders, you know, those curves and bends. And then here is our delta. So our river system comes down and it goes into this triangle shape as it enters into a larger body of water here at the mouth. River systems. <laughs>